Hello everyone, welcome to Stitchin' Ain't Easy. My name is Ashley. Two disclaimers. First one, if you're part of my Yarny friends, my Yarny family, I apologize. This is not a crochet video. Um, this has to do with my health. I promise I'll be back very quickly with the yarn video. I love y'all very much. If you don't want to watch, I totally understand. Uh, disclaimer two, it's going to be dealing with my body bodily things if that's not something you're into I totally understand if you guys dip out now that's fine um I'll be discreet but just saying so okay if you're new hello my name is Ashley I'm a wife a mother of three and I have a rare disease that I suffer with every single day called eosinophilic gastroenteritis um I was born with it as I'm filming this, it is January 2021. I was only diagnosed in February of 2020, so not even a year ago. But I've had issues my entire life, and it makes a whole lot of sense. The diagnosis makes so much sense <laughs> with everything that I've dealt with throughout my life. Okay, <coughs> so eosinophilic gastroenteritis, we're going to call it EG for short. Um... It is like I said, a rare disease. Uh, the gastroenteritis part deals with stomach issues, GI tract issues. Um, the eosinophilic part has to do with eosinophils, which are a type of white blood cell that are like an, this is all an allergy based disease. Um, the eosinophils see things that they deem myself allergic to and they see it as a parasite. So it's the eosinophil's job to like combat like whatever it is that they deem me allergic to, basically. And it could be anything. Um, it's usually food-based or environmental-based. Um, they think there can be some sort of genetic underlying with it. I've heard both things that yes there is, no there's not. So I don't know. Um, okay, some of my symptoms. Good times. Um, it's pain. And on my right side, I'm in pain all of the time. It's just sometimes it's dull and sometimes I can't walk. <laughs> um, it's usually my right side, sometimes my left. Um, I have... Okay. I'm just, I mean, I'm just going to be honest. There was a warning at the first, so okay. If I'm not vomiting, I'm nauseous. All of the time. Um, I've... This disease can come with issues with like diarrhea and things like that. I haven't really dealt with all that. And like constipation also. I haven't really dealt with any of that lately. Have in the past for sure. Um, loss of appetite. Uh, fear of food really. I kind of feel like would be more it. I want food very much so. But every single time I eat, I get sick. Every single time. So um, I've lost a ton of weight. This last bout should we call it, of this stuff. Um, I haven't been able to kick it since November of 2019, so I'm in a year and three months now. Um, I apologize if my voice sounds hoarse. Um, that's part of it too. It's like, it also affects my throat and my esophagus. Actually, it's more like my stomach, my esophagus, and now it's coming up into my throat because it's just so yuck. Um, I clear my throat a lot too, so... Um, <coughs> Uh, with that, like I said, I have just like this kind of mucusy gunk all the time in my throat. And if I eat something that I'm allergic to, I'll have my mouth and my or my tongue, the roof of my mouth and my throat will just break out like it's coated in this. It's disgusting. Anyway, um, so my throat hurts all the time. I get canker sores a lot. I always have, always have gotten canker sores. Always. Um... I am extremely fatigued. Extreme fatigue. Um, this is normally a crochet channel. And I do my crochet videos. And I'm like, hey, how are you? Blah, blah. And I'm all excited. and Because I am. Because it's yarn. And that's my jam. Um, as soon as I'm done filming those videos. Just like as soon as I'm probably going to be done filming this video. I'm going to be ready to go hang out on. Well. I used to sit on the couch. <laughs> Lately, I've been laying in my bed. Um, 
just to like stare at the wall. I can't do anything for a while after I make a YouTube video. Um, I feel like I should note that I'm not at all that person that just sits on the couch and stares at the wall or whatever, like TV, like that's not. Um, we live on 21 acres. We used to have chickens and goats and ducks and all of those things. I was raised around horses and steers my whole life. I mean, I'm, if I wasn't outside messing with the chickens, I was cleaning my house, making it look nice. Um, <clears throat> not at all that person who just doesn't do anything. So that's been probably the most frustrating part. Like I will sit on the couch and just feel like it's everything inside of me to get up to go get a drink or go to the restroom. I just I can't. Extreme fatigue. <laughs> Anywho, okay. So, um, like I said before, this is something that I was born with. Um, lots of kids are born with it. I don't know if I said this. Um, it says very rare. Everyone's born with it. Lots of kids, whenever they're born with it, should I, or born, should I say, um, are sick then even and have to have, uh, be on a formula or be on, um, <clears throat> some of them are on feeding tubes or very strict diet. A lot of people like myself, it doesn't affect until the third to fourth decade, which is exactly what happened. Um, about 80% of people are misdiagnosed. And like I said, that's what happened with myself. That's why I didn't know until just not even a year ago. So, um, <coughs> excuse me. Lots of people end up having to have EpiPens, um, for the allergic part in case that gets to be an issue. Um, the more that mine progresses, I feel like that's probably not a really bad idea. So, okay. Whenever I was born, I was born throwing up. Basically, I mean, almost, like, within a, pretty much right off the bat, to be quite honest about it. Um, my mother had to sleep with me on her chest, and we slept in a recliner, setting up for the first several, like, underlined, several months. Um, if she laid me down at all, well, she couldn't lay me down. If she went to set me down, she had to prop me up, because if she laid me down, I would vomit instantly. <coughs> <clears throat> they wanted to do surgery on my throat whenever I was not even a month old. Thank God they didn't because it's all allergy based. The surgery would have done absolutely nothing. So it's a good thing that they didn't. Um, my mom has always said that I could puke at the drop of a hat. Like we would be doing absolutely anything and I would just get sick. And I remember a lot of times getting sick. Um, going back to stomach stuff, I remember being constipated, like, very, a lot whenever I was, like, kindergarten, first grade, I'm not really sure what the deal was, but I mean, it went away, but I mean, I remember being, being sick, but I remember vomiting almost my whole entire life to the point where, and this is a question for other people out there with EG, if anyone, please, somebody, if anybody else watches this that has it, um, is that something that you guys have noticed like with, the, with throwing up your whole life almost all of the time can you control it because <laughs> I can control the last couple months I haven't been able to but from like my teens until just the last couple months um <clears throat> I was able to completely control it like I feel like I was going to be nauseous and everyone would be you know oh my goodness are you okay it's like I'm fine like if I just breathe through it I'll be fine and everyone thought I was insane for saying that, so I just was wondering if anyone else had that. But, okay, random ramble. Okay, so, like I said, so I could puke all the time, no problem, whenever I was little, all, well, until now, obviously. Um, I have always eaten like a bird. My pediatrician called me a grazer. Um, I would make a plate, or make, you know, put my food on the plate and just have like a little bit of it and that was all and then I'd be full and my mom and my grandma always knew to just set my plate up you know the rest of the kitchen would be clean but my plate would still be sitting over there because I knew I would go back to it um I was like that all the way up until I'm on a liquid diet currently but I've been like that my whole entire life like we'll go somewhere to eat or I'll make dinner here and I'll make myself a plate and then I'll have like if we stay like we go out to eat <coughs> No one else will have a doggy bag, you know, a take-home bag. I'll have one every single time. 
Um, if I have like just a steak and a baked potato or something, I can make in a minimum four to five mils off of that little bitty, I mean six ounce steak. I'm not talking like steak, I'm talking like steak. Like I just get full very, very quickly. And whenever I was younger, people used to try to make me finish my plate. That was never a good idea. Not ever a good idea. Um, <coughs> okay, this is all kind of adolescent stuff. Uh, like I said, I had canker sores a lot. Um, I would get rashes a lot. Uh, my parents couldn't use any dryer sheets and only some detergents because of the rashes and I would break out um, from the time I was in first grade until I'm not even sure for a few years there I had allergy shots two to three times a week um, and I've asked my mom talk to her about it neither of us remember anything being like a food allergy that I was tested for I remember environmental things and there were a lot of things even back then that I was allergic to but they didn't know what this was I guess like I said it's like all these different things throughout my life that have just been random deals that all make so much sense but you'll see that in a minute I'm jumping ahead so anyway <coughs> okay so like I said so I had allergy shots um, stomach issues all the time um, I also feel like I should know I was never like a junk food kid I always would prefer fruit or vegetables over anything sweet always always was like that I liked Pepsi don't get me wrong but other than that like I nectarines and strawberries and bananas those were always that's what I would always go to if I had the option of a candy bar or fruit so that was always weird to me too okay <coughs> in high school um, I'm not really sure, like looking back, I was obviously around something or eating something that I wasn't supposed to. Oh, sorry, my stomach's really starting to hurt. Um, anyways, I was always like around something that I wasn't supposed to be. I had these episodes where I would just itch. Like my skin would be bright red from just scratching all the time and I had these dry patches of skin all over. Um... I went to the dermatologist and they gave me some cream for it. It didn't do anything, so that was just really weird. And I still itch a lot. Um, um, I have rashes a lot still. At that point, I hadn't broken out in like actual hives, like welts. And I've done that a couple times since, but I've always just like itched. And it's really funny because like my palms will itch. And the old wives tell, like, if your palms itch, then money's coming in. So every time my, pal my palms itch, my husband gets all excited. <laughs> so anyway, okay. So in 2002, I was diagnosed with IBS. If you're EG people, you probably know all about that. Just being diagnosed with random things throughout. And anyway, but I knew then even it was only some things that I would eat that made me sick. Um, it was more vomiting than anything. And so it just kind of didn't really line up I didn't think okay not very long after that um I was pregnant with my first child whenever I before I even knew I was pregnant I told my husband either I was pregnant or very very sick because I could not even keep water down um I vomited the entire time until with all three of my kids actually until after I was in the after the recovery room in the actual room that's when I would finally stop throwing up um, with my first son I had an ileus which is where your bowels completely shut down um, I also had an infection my son is 17 still to this day I have no idea what was wrong with me they just put me on two major antibiotics and hope for the best so I was in the hospital for an extra week with my first son. Like I said, um, the ileus happened, everyone was in shock. They're like, that's something that happens to people 65 and older. And it was like, well, I'm 20. I don't know what you want me to say. Like, what, what are we going to do? Anyway, so finally that all worked out. I got over the infection, whatever it was. But with my other two children, like I said, I have three. With my other two, that's how I knew I was pregnant. 
before the tests even read positive, I was sick. I would throw up and I mean, just so sick until the room after I had the baby and they brought it back to me. And then I was ready for Arby's and sandwiches and whatever deliciousness they could bring me. But that whole time, I gained 25 pounds with my first son. I lost weight with my second too, like a considerable amount of weight. And I told people a few times that that was the best diet ever for me anyway was being pregnant because I I seriously came out a good 20 to 30 pounds lighter with my second two <clears throat> they were fine I feel like I should note that they were like perfectly healthy still are they're wonderful everything's fine with them but I was not so um okay so all this you know through all this um I had my daughter in 2008 you know you're in mama mode you have stuff to do, you can't worry about how you feel, all that. So, um, and I was still having issues. But in 2011, my whole world kind of got flipped upside down. Um, I started having severe muscle pain. <coughs> um, like, ripping pains is what I called them. I would have Charlie horses. I felt like I was sunburnt all the time. I would have what I call open nerves, where it feels like my nerve endings are on the outside of my body and it just like the air touching it hurt skin I mean clothes hurt all of these things I had insanely bad migraines to wear I mean the light all of those things like just bad migraines and it all kind of just came on pretty suddenly um I actually went to the Mayo Clinic for it <coughs> and nothing I mean I went to several doctors and then I went to the Mayo Clinic and nothing at all against, like, I'm not saying fibromyalgia is not a real thing. Not at all what I'm saying. For my personal self, whenever they, it's what they diagnosed me with, and whenever they diagnosed me, I knew that that wasn't right. I had some of the symptoms of fibromyalgia, but I had so many more than, like, this little list that they had. Mine was, like, I had so many more, and I knew that there was no way that that was right. Because it's not, it... Anyway, I knew that then that that, there's no way. Um, <clears throat> okay. So, in 2016, in August, we moved into our dream house. In September, I got sicker than I have ever been in my whole entire life. Um, they thought that I had C. diff. I was hospitalized, um, for four or four or five days, I think four days, a while. Anyway, um, but yeah, I was hospitalized. Um, like I said, I was very, very sick after that time. And I did test positive for C. diff. Um, <clears throat> but I have a lot of the same symptoms. Like whenever this bout started in November of 2019, I had a lot of the same symptoms that I did in September. 2016 so it's not that far off kind of the same time of year anyway okay it's all just kind of weird I think um so after I had the C. diff I immediately couldn't have I no longer should I say could have red meat milk eggs hazelnuts pineapples green peppers or avocados no guac <laughs> so that was kind of a bummer it made me very sick so I just I didn't even want to mess with eating any of it to be quite honest it's like it's fine I have all this other stuff I can eat I just won't eat those things okay so um in 2017 was the first time that I ever had insane hives um I broke out and they were just like these giant welts all over my body we went to an outdoor park um, where I've been a billion times and I ate at the little restaurant there the exact same thing that I've had every single time that I went there it's their burger their a bag of Funyuns and a sweet tea same thing every single time since I was old enough to know where we were and like, shortly after I was really sluggish I was ready for bed it was still daytime I was laying on my son at one point just about to fall asleep and then I just kind of started itching and these giant welts just started, I mean like, insane. Just all, it started 
popping up and it hurt so much and it was another like two hours till we could get to the house and get me a Benadryl but I took a Benadryl and I was okay so I don't know if it was the food or if it was something we were around but I mean I've been to this place so many times so it's like slowly my body's like getting worse and there's more symptoms coming on um, like I said this is in 2018 um, <clears throat> two years after the C. diff thing. Um, anyway, that's not right. Okay, in between the C. diff, well, around this all the same time, that is right. But anyway, around this same time, like after the C. diff, a little before the hive thing, I started noticing that whenever I would eat certain foods, it was like I couldn't, it kind of took my breath away almost. Like as I was eating, I'd have to like, like that and breathe which I don't know if that's anything but it's like I feel like that's some sort of an allergic reaction <laughs> my throat kind of being my I don't know but anyway so that also happened so I had the hives I mean slowly getting like all these other symptoms and these weird things I've drank apple juice as long as I can remember like just saying that word I can taste it I love apple juice as of right after December like like I said, after like 8, 2018, 2019-ish, I can no longer have apple juice, no apples, no strawberries. Strawberries would instantly break my mouth out. Okay, so I haven't really talked about this part. I talked about the canker sore part. Um, <clears throat> a lot of times, lately, especially, whenever it's like that, it's like I'd eat the strawberry and it like break my mouth out, which was weird. Lately, I've noticed the more things I eat, it starts with my lips like my lips will get blisters then my mouth will break out um, my throat closes up sometimes which is called impaction um, lots of people have to go and get food taken out of their throats at the hospital if they can't get it down I have thank the Lord haven't had to do that but pills like my, medic my medication it gets stuck in my throat a lot so anyway okay <clears throat> so these are just kind of all slowly building up type things. In no on November 6th, 2019, I remember the date. Like I said before all this, I was active out in the yard. So I was out in the yard working, and all of a sudden I had this pain right here, where I keep having the same stupid pain, and it just dropped me. I mean, that was that. And we went to the emergency room because I thought maybe I had appendicitis or something was wrong they checked me everything was fine the ct scan blood work everything was fine i thought maybe i had okay like a couple days later i started not like having really bad nausea vomiting diarrhea c diff like symptoms so they tested me for c diff again that was a negative um <clears throat> so so this was uh, november whenever that all happened between like january december or january i'm trying to get my primary care to send me somewhere to do something um in this time I'm dehydrated I'm losing weight I'm like I said very very fatigued that's when I get all my mouth gunk like the stuff on my tongue and my throat that I talked about earlier I also had pain shooting down my legs um finally in February of 2020 I got into the first gastroenterologist that I saw um, <clears throat> he did a colonoscopy and endoscopy and found the gas or the eosinophilic gastroenteritis, um, because of, um, my high eosinophil count. He treated me for about five months. I had no improvement. Um, in between that time I saw an allergy, I went a lot for fluid to my primary care. I saw an allergist, they did allergy testing, and I was allergic to a lot of things. Um, let's see, I have a list if you're interested at all. Um, I'm sorry. Okay, <clears throat> so when I went to see him, um, like I said, I already knew about the red meat, pineapples, strawberries, things. Okay, after him, red meat, dairy, eggs, grains, almonds, green peppers, pineapples, bananas, soy. Very allergic to soy. 
apples. Uh, peanuts, tree nuts, hazelnut, all nuts, I guess. Um, codfish, shrimp, scallop, salmon, sesame seeds. <laughs> I was super bummed about that one. Tuna, beef, pork, lamb, chicken, sunflower seeds. So basically meat and everything else. My stomach is so raw at this point that if I could just live, once again, like I said, I love fruits and vegetables. If I could just live off of fruits and vegetables, I'd be just fine. But my stomach's so raw that it can't handle anything like iceberg lettuce, tomatoes, spinach, nothing. Oof. Mm -mm. So none of that is a good thing. So, okay. So this is what the allergist tells me. This allergist refers me to my second gastroenterologist who I hear knows a whole lot about EG and is a really great doctor so I get my hopes up, get all excited, yay. I go to him, went to my appointment, never even met the man, talked to his physician's assistant which is fine, but I've never met the doctor which I feel like is concerning. They immediately scheduled me for a colon another, this is in October, so in February I just had a colonoscopy and an endoscopy. October they scheduled me for another one because he didn't want to believe the other guy's results. Um, never met the man until I was fixing to go back for my procedure. He came in and asked me, um, well, what are you here for? And I told him. And during all this, I, had, with the colonoscopy prep, I had vomited for a good eight hours. By the time I finally got to where my colonoscopy was, was vomiting the whole entire time until they knocked me out. They still went ahead and did it. Um, <clears throat> but anyway, they gave me four bags of fluid. He asked me, like I said, why I was there. I told him. I mean, I felt like it was pretty obvious, right? I told him what I'd been diagnosed with. He's like, well, I'll do my own results. Um, do my own testing. Figure out my own results. Okay, cool. So he asks me, what are my two main concerns? I tell him my pain and vomiting because both of those are every single day. He says, okay, great. He says, he does my test. He comes back in. My husband cannot come, like, had asked several times to come back to hear results whenever the doctor comes in because you know you're kind of loopy after you just have been knocked out, right? The guy comes in. My husband doesn't get to come in. The guy comes in, and I only remember bits and pieces of what he said, obviously. Um... But he told me that he wanted me to come back, or well, he didn't tell me, on my paperwork. He wrote that my two main concerns, my two main complaints, can't remember, I told him abdominal pain and vomiting. He wrote on the paper, diarrhea, stomach pain. Not even the right order, not even the right thing. I'd met the man for five flippin' minutes at this point, and he didn't listen to a word I said. He also wrote on the paperwork that he would like to see me again for a follow-up in two weeks. So, like any normal person, I call to make my appointment. His nurse tells me he doesn't want to see me. But, he found an irregularity on my vocal cords and he wants to send me to a specialist. The freaking nerve. Let's just be honest. I'm trying real hard to like keep cool right now. The nerve. Okay, so, sure dude. I'll go to your specialist. So I go to the specialist, the ear, nose, and throat specialist. They jam a camera down my nose, into my throat, and then tell, he tells me, you're fine. I don't see anything. There's nothing. I, I don't even know what you want me to do for you at this point. So once again, I'm just like, okay, cool, thanks, guys. So that was the end of that. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, so now I'm back to going to just my primary care for fluids and things all the time. This is like all oh, like December, November-ish or whatever. Um, and this is whenever I, okay. So I told you all the foods that I can't have. Um, this is when it sucks. I'm gonna try really hard to keep it together. Okay, as of November of 2020, so three months ago, I could have uh, gluten-free pancakes, like the Krusty's pancakes. I could have those and outshine popsicles, and I could have the Albanese, like the gluten-free gummy bears, those turkey snack stick things, which are really, really good. Um, I thought I could have coconut milk, 
soft peppermints. Um, Nesquik strawberry, like the syrup. Um, I think that's, oh, those Nature's Bakery, like the gluten-free, free of everything, um, blueberry granola bars. Okay, <clears throat> so as of right now, um, like I said, I'm on a liquid diet. I have a plant-based organic drink that I drink getting really old. I can't even keep it down anymore. Um, it gets like stuck. Sometimes I'll go to drink it and it just gets stuck right here. And it's not like, I said, usually almost instantly if it hits my stomach, I get sick. Um, yeah. Sometimes I can still have the Outshine Popsicles. I feel like that's important. So I sort of get a little bit of a treat. And I can only have some I can only have some of those, but I can have like the strawberry ones, which are delicious. They have real pieces of strawberries. Which doesn't make very much sense, right? Because they're frozen strawberries. That's my other thing. Okay, so like the tomato part. I said I couldn't have tomatoes and different things like that. Um if they're grown out of a garden, I can eat them. And so I'm just wondering if it's maybe something that they put on them that I can't have. Because just like that, I can have frozen strawberries, but can't have real strawberries. I mean, that should be I'm allergic to strawberries, right? Okay. None of it may, I mean, it's all just crazy. Anyway, um, I drink Sprite. That's the only, like, I can't have flavored sodas or anything at all like that. They all make me sick. Um, <clears throat> I mean, I don't really know. Except pretty much everything that I could eat three months ago was officially off the table now um the medications that I'm on I feel like that's important okay so this is what I take for my anti-nausea I just leave it in this because by itself it looks real classy um I hate like I can't just put this in my purse just because so anyways so I put it in this but they're promethazine gel and it's 40 milligrams and it's not uh like a syringe with a needle. Everyone's all weird about that. It's just lotion or well medication. But anyway, I just do that and that helps with my nausea. Um, okay, I'm on Protonics two times a day. Singular once a day. I take an uh, inhaler, a Flovent, or no, not Flo, yeah, Flovent. Almost said Flomax. Flovent inhaler two times a day in two times, like, so four times a day, I guess, two of those times, um, I pump it and I swallow it, <coughs> well, every time I pump it and I swallow it, I don't inhale it, I swallow it, so it'll coat my throat and all that gunk and stuff and go down, hopefully, I also am on a multivitamin, um, I know that's, like, nothing compared to a lot of people, um, whenever they thought that I had the fibro junk and all of that, I was on 46 different vitamins and pills at one point which is way too many okay if you're a doctor or a person listening if you're sick you get very desperate 46 pills a day is unnecessary okay it was like this like I could do this and hope that they all stayed in my hands I mean if your stomach's that bad already how is that anyways just I'm frustrated. I apologize for the rambling. I don't even know if I'm going to post this. This may just be my journal entry. I don't even know. Um, <clears throat> in case I do post it, however, since that's kind of where I'm at at this point, I, um, okay, well, just like I said at the first, like the random piece of chocolate, I had a piece of chocolate the other day that was supposed to be completely allergy free. I mix my plant based shakes with rice milk because that's the only thing that I can have. Um, and so I knew that I could have rice milk. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, I ate a piece of chocolate that is completely allergen free. It is rice milk chocolate. I ate it and almost instantly my lips got blisters. My mouth broke out. My throat felt weird. And within 10 minutes I was throwing up. I mean there was hardly anything to throw up. It was a little piece of chocolate. But my body, my body made sure 
to get rid of that chocolate. So <clears throat> at this point, I'm just trying to find what I can and can't have. So far, Sprite seems to be the only thing that I can keep down, which is very scary. I go for fluids very often. Um, and I'm just trying to find a good doctor. My doctor right now is trying to get me into a gastroenterologist. And I suggested his name is Dr. Rothenberg. He lives in Cincinnati, or he's from Cincinnati, Ohio. Um, I mentioned him. And my doctor tried to get me in with the first gastroenterologist that I saw. Even though I told him I don't want to see the two people you already sent me to. He sent me to the first person. So that was fun. So now I'm just kind of at a standstill, ready for a new doctor, mostly. But anyway. Okay. So if I post this. Um, <clears throat> and you want information. You can go to appfed.org, which is the American Partnership for Eosinophilic Disorders. They have the website. They also have a YouTube channel. And Dr. Mark Rothenberg, if you're out there, shout out, please give me a call. That would be great. I thought about just making this and sending it to him. Anyway, um, it's the CURED Foundation, C-U-R-E-D, all capitals, foundation. It stands for the Campaign Urging Research for Eosinophilic Disease. So that's, that's that. I don't really know anything to say. It is 36 minutes long. This is by far the longest I've ever rambled on a video. By far. So I don't even know if I'll post this. I appreciate you guys so very much for watching it. And if this helps one person, then awesome. Um, if someone is dealing with some of these things and is just at a standstill and doesn't know, maybe this will give you some sort of hope, some sort of insight even. That would be cool. So, I appreciate you guys so much for watching, especially to the end of my 37 minute video. Mercy. I hope y'all stay safe and have a very blessed day.